For the past several weeks, our gospel lessons, teachings from Christ, have been talking about growth and using seeds, uh, sowers casting seeds, all kinds of images drawn from the natural world. And we have yet another one this week when Jesus talks about the mustard seed, talking about how it's the smallest of all seeds, and yet when it's planted and nourished with the sunshine and the water, that it becomes the largest of the trees. And the idea, of course, that is most commonly associated with this parable is that it takes very little of our own uh, being that God and God's presence and love will make us grow into great trees. The, uh, the epistle lesson that will precede the gospel, a, a section from Paul's uh, letter to the Romans, really uh, provides a good context for that mustard seed teaching and it starts off with that very evocative line of Paul's where he says that when we don't even know how to pray on our own, that the Spirit of God intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. And that passage ends very beautifully with that affirming statement that nothing will separate us from the love of, God, of Christ, neither uh, death, nor life, nor principalities, nothing in the world or beyond the world can separate us from God's love. And that idea that God's love is all surrounding us, all pervasive, that everything around our existence is enveloped in God's love. And of course, that gives us lots of great opportunities as we sing praises to God and to acknowledge that universality of God's presence and God's love. So we'll start off the service beginning with one of the most popular hymns in all of Christian hymnody, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. triumphant, majestic hymn that is easy to sing with a wonderful text that talks about experiencing God in every aspect of our lives and how all things on, in the world have some sort of way for us, a lens through which we can see God's presence. It's interesting, this is a hymn that's been in the Christian church for a long time, uh, but it didn't really get popular until the 20th century. Uh, the tune itself was probably based on a folk tune, uh, but the text was originally written by a German pastor, Joachim Neander, uh, during the Reformation, and then was translated in the 19th century by Catherine Winkworth. At uh, communion, we will be singing hymn 513, which is one of our hymns uh, about the Holy Spirit, like the murmur of the dove song, and it picks right up on that Romans passage talking about the Spirit interceding for us. And this is a very popular tune in the newer tradition of our hymnody. <laughs> If you notice at the bottom of the page, the tune is given as bridegroom. This tune was actually written for another text that starts as the bridegroom to his people, talking about the church, but it also had some fairly antiquated language in it. It's a funny story. When the hymnal committee, uh, putting together the hymnal 1982, when they were considering all the resources, both tunes and texts, they really wanted to use this tune because the editors were uh, so enamored with it. And yet, like I say, the text that it was written for seemed a little uh, antiquated and maybe even a little sexist. So they commissioned Carl Daw, who was on the committee, uh, who is a, a, an Episcopal priest and a poet in his own right, to write this beautiful tune. So he, or this text, to go with the tune. So the tune was pre-existing, and he just listened to the tune over and over, and came that he felt like it was also a prayer to invite the Holy Spirit to come. So a little bit of an interesting backstory on that. And at the end of the service, we'll be singing another very popular hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory, with that wonderful Welsh tune, Cum Ranta.
So we have a lot of very popular and very easy to sing melodies this Sunday. We have beautiful prayers and anthems as we all express the love of God that is all pervasive in our lives. We hope that you will come and experience that presence with us here at St. John.